Thanks to everybody who's hopped on so far. We're super happy to have you. Uh, David and Annalise, thank you for having your, your cameras on so I'm not the only one. <laughs> uh, feel free to turn your cameras on. That way we all feel like we're in a group. Thank you, Joseph. It's good to see your smiling face. Um, Emna Senla as well. Um, so we will begin by just saying thank you to everybody for making this past week the most successful BOGO week India has ever had because it's our only BOGO week. Um, but we, in all honesty, had amazing success thanks to you. The reception of how BOGOs were received um, were all thanks to you. We had many days where we sold out and and almost you know cleared all of our inventory of BOGOs, but we are very excited because of your efforts getting the business, the presentations, BOGO, and the message to the field. It's all thanks to those who are on this call, especially, I assume if you're on this call, you're you're doing doTERRA not only for the amazing products, but for the business as well. And BOGOs are a very big part of that. So just a, a warm, hearty congratulations and a thank you from the office here in India, as well as from the US, even from the owners, uh, Jim Fowler, Russell Butters, the VPs of India and 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 Greg Cook, Corey Lindley, they were they're so excited about India and the progress that we're making here, and they're also very excited with the way that you're sharing. Um, every month, we're seeing more and more success. We're seeing lots and lots of warm reception towards the oils, and the most common response that I get towards the essential oils in India is, "Wow, I've never smelled anything like this in my entire life." It doesn't smell anything like any other company has ever produced, even the top brands. And so it's it's really thanks to you guys for marketing it and getting the sales going in the field. Um, and we're here to support that. So um, with that, mostly thanks to uh, to Shub and the other office staff and, and Narani and her team who are here supporting as well um, and Minoj for leading the operation. But we... Um, We'll begin this business presentation and, and we'll kind of do a recap of last week and then we'll jump into an amazing topic about Founders Club. We'll talk about Founders Club for India specifically and, and what that means for each of you when we jump into the presentation. Just as a reminder to, to please mute yourselves until the very end and then we will uh, open it up for questions and and then we, you know, feel free to put your questions inside of the chat as well. Uh, but because of these amazing products, it has also created such an amazing desire and excitement for people to to learn about the business. And so that's what we're here to do today is learn about the business and, and learn about how it can influence your lives. And so today we're going to specifically be talking about um, the recap of commissions and then how that leads into Founders Club and why that's important. So with that, we'll go ahead and commence. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my computer screen and give me just a moment and then give me a thumbs up when, when you're able to see it. Um, <clears throat> so, okay, thank you. Um, okay, well, I wanna start off with the first question that we've asked a lot of you in person as we've come to your cities and different parts of India. We've, we've traveled to uh, now more than a dozen places as, as corporate where all the growth is happening, including Chennai, Bengaluru, Hyderabad, Kolkata, Delhi, uh, Mumbai. We've had a few events and Pune, and then many places up in the Northeast in Manipur, Mizoram, especially Nagaland and Kohima and Dimapur um, and, and Guwahati and Assam. And so we always, at the end of the presentation, ask everybody if they're willing to help take doTERRA to all of India. And we know that those who are on this call are, um, but we want to give you some amazing incentives and why uh, why you'll want to take doTERRA to all of India. I'm sure many of you, you know, have been with us from the very beginning, already know what Founders Club is and what that means for India and what that takes. Um, we are so, so, so excited to to announce Founders Club, you know, when we before we even launched the market, we told everybody there would be 40 Founders Club positions in the market in India. And that's because this market is very, very big. Um, and Founders Club is really 
the goal of getting the market launched and up to speed um, quickly. And so we, we put this incentive of Founders Club um, in every new market that we launch to help reward those who are doing all the heavy lifting, who are the pioneers of that market, who, who hit the rank of typically it's gold um, first. Some, sometimes the markets will start off at platinum, but mostly it's gold. And the same is true here in India. And so last time we talked about um, rank and qualifications, right? And, and commissions. Does anybody remember, and you can put this in the chat or raise your hand or, or unmute yourselves, but does anybody remember what it takes to hit the rank of gold in doTERRA? Thank you. Yes, yes. Feel, do you know what it takes to hit the rank of gold? Disconnected though. What's that? And someone's talking over the mic. It's not. Oh, close. okay. Oh, okay. Uh, Vincent, did you have a did you have a comment, Vincent Gomez? Okay, no worries. Well, um, just to just to give you a recap of what we talked last time, um, to to hit gold, um, I'll share the screen so you guys can see the the rank qualifications. Um, <clears throat> But to hit gold, you need three legs. Uh, does anybody remember how high that rank of each leg needs to be to qualify as gold? Annalise, I think you said it. Feel free to unmute yourselves. I cheated a bit. <laughs> that's a, that's okay. Premieres. Okay, good. Three premieres. Um, and I know that Imna Senla, who's on this call, also knows that because she is a gold herself. Um, and she is in the process. She is in the process of qualifying for Founders Club. Um, so we are very, very excited. Um, the Dev, if you could just make sure to mute yourself. It looks like it's it's coming through with the whole chat. But um, Imna Senla knows that as well. You need three premieres at least for you to hit gold. Um, and what is a premier? A premier uh, qualification to hit premier requires two executives. And what is an executive? What is, what is a building block of an executive? Um, and that is 2000 OB. So we'll go over this chart right here, but essentially the first building block towards any rank. Um, give me just a second. I'm going to I'm gonna make sure that we have everybody muted because it's uh I think it's gonna it's a little distracting for everybody. Narini. Okay, just soliciting some help from Narini so that we can um, help manage the chat and and get everybody muted that keeps them muting. Um, Dev Dev Raj, did you have a question? De Dev Raj, I see your hand raised. No question. Okay. No problem. Um, okay. Hello. Yes. Hello. Yes. Yes. Uh, sir, my name is Devraj from India. Awesome. How are you? Fine. Sir, uh, my English is very weak, but uh, trans uh, I know understand uh, your language. 
please uh, translate uh, in Hindi. Yeah, we uh, let's see. Um, we don't have translation right now, but we are working on it. So we're working on getting a platform set up that you'll have translation while I'm speaking. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. No problem. Okay. Um, Thank you for your help, Narani. Um, okay, just wanted to, we'll, we'll jump in, we'll jump back in and talk about um, what it takes to hit these different ranks in doTERRA. So you can all see the screen right here. Um, you can see the different ranks and the different qualifications. Don't get overwhelmed by this because it is a lot of information, but um, the first building block, or I call it a brick that builds other ranks in doTERRA is the rank of executive. Now, executive rank is the first one that you'll need to hit to be able to qualify um, a premier to hit that rank. So a premier, again, needs two executives and then a total organizational volume of 5,000 OB. So essentially around five lakh rupees is what they would need to hit premier. Now for a premier, if you have three different premiers on your team, and they're all on separate legs, and they're you hold personal enrollment of each of them. It doesn't matter if they're on your front line or even five levels down. As long as you're the enroller, you will you will become a gold. Um, and so again, as Annalise said, golds need three premiers. Premiers need two executives, and executives need two thousand OB. So just to recap the qualifications um, and what it takes to hit that rank. And then we'll also talk about that here. So executives, again, you need 2,000 OV. Premiers, you need two executives with a total of 5,000 OV. And then golds need those three premiers. So just keep that in mind as we're talking about Founders Club. Um, so Founders Club, we have 40 positions that are that are open in, in India. Um, and basically, what that means is that if you are a founder in India, if you're one of the first 40 to reach the rank of gold, solidify it and get that position, then you will get 1% of the total commissionable volume each year from India allocated and split amongst those 40 founders. So initially, what you have to do is achieve and maintain the rank of gold or above for at least three consecutive months in a calendar year. So during this year, or next year, if Boundage Club is still open, hit gold three months in a row to qualify. And then after you've qualified and after you're in Founders Club, you have to, you have what's called Founders Club maintenance requirements. You have to maintain your rank. You have to continue to hit gold throughout all of next year, the year of 2023. And then we'll raise the requirements in 2024 to platinum. And then in 2025, it will go up to diamond. So we'll give you plenty of time to not only hit gold and solidify it each month, but also we'll raise the requirements to make sure that your team is growing and to incentivize growth um, for the market. And so basically that comes with the second condition that you have to be personally engaged in the business uh, within the market and then make sure that you have 90% of your qualifying volume coming from that market. So I'm gonna open it up to a question here um, that you can jump in the chat and do. Um, does anybody know what 90% of qualifying volume com um, means compared to overall volume? What's the difference between qualifying volume and overall volume? Out of the 5,000 PV, uh, which is required, 90% of it should come in from the Indian market. The rest 10 percent can come in from the other markets where we do business. Am I right? Perfect. You've got it, Joseph. So what's 90 percent of, of 5,000 to hit Premier? It's 4,500, 5, right? 500. Yeah. So 4,500 of that needs to come from India. And then the rest, it doesn't matter where that volume comes from, whether it's in Mexico or Brazil or China or another market that you decide to grow your doTERRA business in. We care about the qualifying volume minimum. So we don't care about the overall volume. You just have to have that qualifying volume be at a minimum of 90% coming from India. Now that 
with everybody on this call, I don't think that's a worry, but if you are growing in different markets and you're listening to this call or this recording, then be mindful that we are gonna be looking at qualifying volume. So I'll give you an example. At the executive level, it takes 2000 OV to make somebody executive. You and your team beneath you, everybody has to have an overall volume amount of 2000 for you to be executive, right? Um, what's 90% of 2000? Essentially the, the Founders Club qualification. 1800, David's got it. So it doesn't matter if you are an executive or an elite and you have 100,000 in volume in that one leg or even more, as long as you have the minimum requirement at the executive and elite levels of 90%, which is 1800 for executive and 2700 for elite. So we're really looking at the qualifying volume. What is the qual? What does it take to qualify as an executive? What does it take to qualify as a, as an elite or a premier? We're looking at the minimum amount to qualify as that rank, and then ninety percent of that needs to come from India. So it doesn't matter if there's a hundred ninety nine percent of the volume overall is coming from another market as long as you have the minimum requirement at 90 percent to hit within india you will be um, a founder so does that make sense any questions there between yes, the difference of qualifying and and overall yes andrew i have a question yes uh, raj it, this not only applies for founders and for gold rank but we are saying for every rank the qualifying criteria is 90 percent as qualifying means 90 percent of the volume has to come from india right not not for rank. So this is just for Founders Club. You can hit okay. rank with volume anywhere in the world. It doesn't matter if you have one person I, on your team from every other country. I got confused when you said for executive 90%, it has to be 2,700. So what is that about? So for executives, you, your minimum volume for an executive to qualify a premier who qualifies a gold, we're looking at the executive level, right? Because that's the foundation or the building block for Founders Club, right, for gold, 90% of that volume to hit the minimum rank of executive needs to come from India to be able to qualify for Founders Club. So the, the, the volume to hit executive is 2,000. What's 90% of that? It's 1,800. So as long as you have at least 1,800 of your volume and your executive legs that are coming from India, you will become, you'll become a founder. So if if I have a front line where my front line is someone in Australia, but below them, they're all Indians and they, uh, I mean, they all have a volume from India, that would still qualify, right? Good question. So we'll go over that as well during this call, but anybody that's outside of, of India, that's a qualifier, if you have a premier or an executive that makes up the structure to help you qualify as gold. If they're from outside of India, they cannot be used to help qualify. So we're looking at the premiers and executives, those qualifiers need to be so from they India. Can be in the second, they can be at the second level though, or third level for that matter, as long of as course. you have enrollment. Of as course, you, you yeah, you could hold right. enrollment of a premier that's 10 levels deep in your organization. And as long as the premier and the executives are from India, and then their volume, the minimum qualifying volume is 1800 for executive and 4500 total for premier in that India leg, then you will be um, you will be qualifying. Does that help make sense? Still a bit confusing, but we'll get but we'll Raj, 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 yes. Raj, this, uh, this is like a tongue twister. Yeah. If you want to be a blue diamond or a double diamond, you can have your PV from across the world. If you want to be a founder, it has to be from the same country you have to be. Got it. I got the difference between qualification and founder. I have another question, which is, you have you said just now, Andrew, that once you are gold, you're, you know, you're uh, uh, the founder position, say, let, let's say by the end of the year, the 40th person qualifies, you know, by the end of the year. Now, you're saying next year, if they don't maintain it, they will get dropped. Are they will get dropped. That? Now, does that dropped position open up another founder's position or they drop forever? Good or question. So 39? 
So let's say we have founders club positions and, and we fill them up either in December or January, or February of next year. As long as right. there's open positions, as long as the 40 are not filled, if somebody yep. drops within that 40, that spot will open back up. But once the 40 yep. positions have been filled, then, right. then founders club is closed. So if somebody drops after the Founders Club is closed, after all 40 spots are filled, then we won't be backfilling that with any other any other qualifiers. So once the so 40 have been filled, then have, they, they're filled. So technically, you could have 40 founders at the beginning, but in the end, you may only have 25 founders. It's possible. It's possible. It's possible. Okay. Um, I mean, the same thing happened in the U.S. They opened up. Uh, 25 positions and and currently there's 18 or 19 so a lot of them are still in there but okay. for those after founders club is filled after we filled all 40 spots if people it's fall done. out after the right. 40 are filled and we've closed founders club then it's done but if we have only filled 20 spots and then the 20th person drops out and we're only at 19 that 20th spot is now open back up so if that makes sense, once we're when we're within the qualification period and those 40 spots, whether it's one or all 40 are open, then it's free game for everybody. But once the 40th position has been filled, then then it's closed and, and we're not opening it back up. So Captain, okay. can I ask you a question? Like if I am in the 40, I drop down and but the I am in, in the founder's position and it's closed. And probably next year I drop off but I'm still can re-qualify and get back since it is the closed. No. Good, good question. So um, be mindful that doTERRA um, founders club qualifications are very strict. Um, and when you say, if I qualify, you should rephrase it, Joseph, and say, when I qualify as a founder, right? Because we want you all to qualify. <laughs> uh, but essentially, let's say, let's say you hit founders club this year, then next year, um, you have to hit 10 out of 12 months. So there are a couple of grace months we'll give you so that let's say you have a hard month or volume is difficult or everybody in your team's on vacation. And so it's a very hard month to get qualifications. We're still going to give you two months of grace um, and work with you, right? doTERRA on a case by case, we're going to work with you, right? But if you just give up or you just completely drop out and uh, don't maintain your rank, then then you will drop off if it extends beyond that two months. So philosophically, to understand the founders, it's not just that you qualify once. The reason you're given a founders is not only have you hit the qualification, you need to build on it, maintain it, and grow. That's really the philosophical foundation. Am I correct? That's, that's correct, Raj. And you bring up a great point. Founders Club, again, is the building block of, of the market. So we're going to reward the top 40 people who hit rank the quickest. The rank, the benchmark we've set for that is, is gold. So if you can hit gold and maintain it um, and then continue to maintain the requirements as we raise the bar a few years out, um, again, 2024 will be platinum, 2025 will be diamond. Um, doTERRA may raise it again, but in every other market, including the US, uh, the rank and the highest rank requirement for Founders Club is diamond. Uh, that's as high as it's been. Um, again, that could change. It could go to blue diamond in some markets, but that's to incentivize you so that you're not just going for gold and, and putting in volume that might be inorganic to hit three months in a row to get a position and then drop out. The goal here is to grow the market. We want you to grow the team in your, your entire you know, neighborhood and, and city, but the real goal is for us to grow the market. And so Founders Club is going to reward you for, for growing your team, building it, and then maintaining those qualifications. Andrew, it's Cindy. Would, hey. would you please just clarify for everyone the difference between personally enrolled um, people in order to make rank versus you know, you can have the volume, but if they're not personally enrolled, it doesn't count for Good rank. Point. Great point, Cindy. Yes, of course. Good, good question. So there, there are two different type of um, ways to get people signed up, right? We have, we have two trees, essentially. Um, you can sponsor somebody and you can enroll them, or you can do both. You can enroll somebody and they can... You, they can also be sponsored under your account. 
So if every if everybody can just make sure that we're all muted. Um, but essentially, if you enroll somebody, that person can then help qualify you for rank. So if I'm a premier and I enroll somebody, then they can help me in the future if they hit executive um, to qualify as a premier. Now, when I place them or how it looks on the structure, again, where, whether they're on my front line, my second level, third level, fourth level, that's the sponsor tree. Um, and so that we're talking about two different, um, two different placement structures here. We have the enrollments that you hold. Those are the people that you introduce into doTERRA. And if you hold their enrollment, they can help you qualify for rank. And then within the enroller tree or your enrollees, uh, that's how you get paid out the sharing bonus. So the weekly sharing bonus that we talked about last week, that is paid out weekly. And it's based off of all the orders of your personal enrollees and then the personal enrollees that you have, if they introduce people into doTERRA, uh, you're going to earn commissions off of that volume. So on your first level in the enroller tree, you'll earn 25%. On the second, it's 10%. Um, so the enroller tree is important for rank and it's also important for the sharing bonus. But the sponsor tree is different. The sponsor tree is how your structure looks. How many people do you have on your front line? Do you have three or five or 10? How many people do you have on your second level, your third level and so forth? And that is how the power of three and unilevel are paid out. So when we look at levels for, for the different percentages that you, that you make within unilevel or with the power of three structure, you have three people on your front line, they each have three and then those each have three for a total of 27, you get the 85,000 rupee bonus. And so I hope this kind of just puts some context behind the importance of um, structuring the right way, but also the difference between the enroller tree and the sponsor tree. For example, if I, if I enroll somebody, they could still be on my, on my organization on the fifth level. I could sponsor them under somebody else different than myself. They could be on my fifth or sixth level. But as long as I maintain the enrollment of that person, as long as I hold it, that person could potentially qualify me for, for rank um, or, for example, Founders Club. Does that help Cindy and Raj? I, I have to tell you, it took me years to understand that concept. I, I just, for some reason, it went right over my head when I first started. And then it was a surprise a year or two later. And, and, and I don't know how I missed it, but it was one of the concepts that just did not sink in. I, I heard people say it over and over, but I didn't know what it meant. And so it just Andrew. went right over. Oh, yeah. thank you for saying that. Because again, we don't want this call to be something where you feel like you have to know everything by the time we're done. These calls are, are a maintenance, they're a training and they're to help you get up to speed so that you can all be at the same level as Cindy or other wellness advocates that do understand all these different concepts. And that's a lot to take in, but that's why we're doing these business trainings um, so that you can all understand it within India. Andrew, given the what you just mentioned, I never thought of, a, thought of this as an enrollment tree and a sponsor tree. Well, that makes so much sense. You're saying the enrollment tree will essentially enable you to qualify for rank and also determine your first, you know, your sharing bonus. Your sponsor Correct. tree, on the other hand, will essentially enable you to get your power of three and your unilevel incomes. That's a good way to look at it. That's perfect. I love that. That's the way that I look at it. And it helps me a lot okay. because when you look at your enroller tree, everybody that's on your front line of the enroller tree are people that you have enrolled, the people that you've introduced. It doesn't matter if they're sponsored 10 levels beneath you or on the structure or the graphical tree or the detailed genealogy, you see that they're on a different level underneath you for, for unilevel or power three. When you look at the enroller tree, anybody that's on your front line of the enroller tree is personally enrolled by you. They're the ones who have entered, you've introduced to doTERRA and they're the ones who can help qualify you for rank, regardless of how deep they are in your tree. In fact, I know of a couple of presidential diamonds uh, that have people beyond 10 and even 15 levels in one leg that help qualify them for presidential. They almost don't make anything in unilevel off of them. It doesn't help them with power of three, but because they hold the enrollment, even though they're so deep in their tree, 
they are able to qualify that high rank. And so it is, is it, it is important to hold on to your enrollments. Don't ever give up an enrollment until the last moment. For those of you who watched the training that David Sterling gave, he gave uh, a lot of emphasis on holding on to your enrollments for as long as possible. You know, you don't want to just gift an enrollment to somebody because you want to motivate them. Typically, what will happen if you do that is they'll start making money and you won't and they won't change their behaviors. The only time you want to gift an enrollment to somebody is when it makes a difference for you and them and they deserve it or they earn it. So if I am a silver and I need one of my elites to hit premiere, and I hold an enrollment of an executive beneath that elite. And if I gift it to that elite, it'll make them premier. Then that makes sense. That makes sense to do that because it benefits both of us. And I'm assuming that that elite is going to also be working hard. And I want to make sure that it makes sense for everybody. I just don't want to gift an enrollment just to gift it. That happened in the beginning days of doTERRA in the U.S. and in other markets. And it's a mistake I don't want you to make as well. Anytime you're going to gift an enrollment, Typically, it's not going to be until you're trying to achieve the rank of gold, but please consult with us and your upline at the same time if you're ever planning on gifting an enrollment. Don't just do it because. Don't send an email to placements and say, I'm going to gift this enrollment to so-and-so to help them be more motivated to do the business. That's not the way it works. You want to make sure that you hold on to those enrollments as if they're a piece of real estate because they are an asset in and of themselves because that person, you holding enrollment of them, may mean the difference between you hitting gold or silver or you going diamond or platinum. It really is that important to maintain each enrollment that you hold um, because it can be the difference between you hitting rank or not. Uh, just to answer a couple of questions in the chat, it is possible to be a member of Founders Club from two other countries, but you would need to hit and maintain the qualifications of both of those markets. So if you were to do it in India, you could go to another market, but you would have to build up a new structure, new enrollments and in and, and that market and meet those qualifications. And this will, this is recorded. This is being recorded right now and it will be posted to the team app. So, so we'll be able to watch this again. Andrew, this is a very practical question. A lot of times when you enroll a new person, they are very enthused about the business but they're still not yet so knowledgeable about the business and are not confident of enrolling a good contact. So essentially, you assist in enrolling them because you're a little bit more ex experienced. What would you do in that situation? Would you keep the enrollment or would you give them the enrollment? Uh, good question. If it's your contact and you introduce them to doTERRA, then I would keep the enrollment. But if it's somebody that you've enrolled and they're bringing a friend of their own into doTERRA, then I would let them keep the enrollment. Again, it's okay. all a case by case. Um, right. No, because if that no person just says, I'm never going to be doing the business and I just, you hold my enrollments, you support them. The enrollment, if you are holding that enrollment, what you're saying is that you're going to be the one to support them. You're going to be the one to answer their phone calls. You're going to answer their questions when they come to you for product or business related queries. And so by you holding that enrollment, I mean, the more enrollments you have, kind of the more stretched you are as far as support. Um, but at the same time, you want to help your people also get their own enrollments because without their own, they can't qualify for any rank as well. Uh, but again, it's a case by case scenario. And uh, I would consult and look at it um, individually depending on the circumstance. Okay. That's a, that's a conversation that needs to happen. You don't just automatically do one or the other and it needs to be given careful consideration because it can be a lot of resentment later on. Yeah. If someone suddenly realizes Oh my goodness! Look what I've look look how this actually works, and look what I've given up. So, the safety valve there is that let's just say you know, Raj enrolls his brother Joseph, um, and Joseph says, "I am never doing this. Like, pff, no way, no how." So I have three friends. Like, do you do whatever you want your best bet is to put them under Joseph because someday if Joseph changes his mind, they're within his structure and you can gift those enrollments back to him. If you go and you put mean, them under sponsor. Yeah. Yeah. someone else entirely, mm -hmm. you have no opportunity to move them back over. It's much, much, much more difficult. So once a structure is built, 
it's extremely difficult even to make minor adjustments. So that's a really great point for me because uh, I've already run into that problem where I didn't realize it. They were already somewhere else. And that person was bringing more friends. And technically speaking, everything from that person, uh, person's uh, benefit should have benefited the original person, at least in terms of their tree. But, exactly. And, and now I'm, I'm having a problem. I'm having to sell her my place a few other people or whatever. That's a good point. Thank you. Yeah. Especially if family is involved. <laughs> you don't, you don't <laughs> ever want to dilute the opportunity for family members. So it's very, very important to, to at the very least, if they don't want to be involved, it's okay. But if they bring others, stack them appropriately so that someday you might give them back. Thank you Andrew, so much, Cindy. That, yeah, that's Andrew, perfect. That much, okay. Yeah, I always appreciate your valuable insight as I feel like it's right in alignment with doTERRA's culture. So again, do what feels right. If it doesn't feel right keeping an enrollment because that other person did all the work or they brought them to the class, then, then let them keep it. You know, you want to make sure that you're doing things the right way and that there's no hard feelings in the future. Um, do what makes sense in the given circumstance, um, but always try to always try to conduct your business and in, in the best way possible that feels the best. That's that's the that's the best advice I can give is always do the business. And that's the doTERRA way is to do things um, with honesty and integrity, right? Right. As difficult awesome. as it may be, to give up those enrollments. You feel like you're giving up the enrollments to your downline because they brought the person. The way that we say it around here in, in, my, in my neck of the US, we say, whoever brought the person to the party, it's their enrollment. The party may be at my house and I may be explaining all the information, but if that person brought them, it's their enrollment. By the way, this is why the sharing bonus goes up a level, that 10%, because the point is it's assumed that you will be assisting at some point on some level and, and, and for a while, potentially. And you may be giving resources, but that's called you know, investing in your business. Exactly, I love this. So these, these points are very important to make because as you understand them, you're gonna understand what it's gonna to take to hit gold with the end goal of becoming a founder here in India. Okay, so let's go, should we move on to the fourth point? Um, I had a couple of questions about that. Um, if you look at the fourth point for Founders Club, we gotta make sure that 50% of your qualifying volume is coming from wellness advocates that are actively engaged and participating in the company's LRP program. Um, so what does that mean? What does that mean? Essentially, it means that if you are a wellness advocate and you are shooting for Founders Club, you're trying to hit a uh, Founders Club position, the rank of gold, it means that half of that 90% needs to be coming from uh, the fact it needs to be coming from the LRP program. So the LRP program is very important. It's important in every market in doTERRA. It's how we have such a, an amazing retention rate, right? One of the best selling points of doTERRA is the 80 to 85 of 80 to 85 percent of all of those who are in doTERRA, whether you're in India or the U.S., are purely product consumers. Really, only maybe 15 to 20 percent of everybody that joined doTERRA do it for the products and the business. But how do those, how do those customers stay in doTERRA? Why do they choose to, to be loyal to doTERRA's product? And it's always because they have an amazing and a supportive upline that teaches them the importance of using these products daily so that they're consuming them every single month. And with that comes the LRP program, right? We have a, a program called the Loyalty Rewards Program where if you place an order every single month of a certain PV threshold, uh, then you're going to get rewarded for it. You'll get points back. You'll get even higher percentage of points back the longer you're loyal in doTERRA. Um, but as you're actively participating in the LRP program, you also get perks like uh, the, the sharing bonus. You'll get perks like power of three. 
And then you also get perks like the product of the month and other promotions. So anytime we offer a free product of the month, basically you placing your order from the 1st to the 15th of the month, as long as it's over 125 PB, we're going to give you a free oil to say thank you for doing so. Um, okay, and then the last one is be a wellness advocate in good standing and adhere to Founders Club policies. So basically, we just ask that you that you abide by the terms and conditions of doTERRA that you're that you're performing and executing your business in, in a way that is in alignment with doTERRA's culture, but also the policies that have been set forth. Um, before we jump to um, more of the in-depth qualifications, I want to give you a little background and, and a story about uh, the Mountain Men. Has anybody ever heard of the Mountain Men by your show of hands or in the chat? You can even say yes or no. Okay. So Dashroth Manji. Um, Dashroth Manji is, is a, a man that many people know who was famous in India. Uh, because what did he do? Does anybody remember what he did um, and how long it took him to do this? Yes. What, what did he do? So basically, he just made a road across the mountain to build, uh, I think, to reach the hospital, basically. So something like that. Yeah, good, good. So Dashrath Manji, he lived with his wife and family in a very small village that was surrounded by really large rocky hills. Um, and one day his wife was trying to scale over this mountain. I, I don't know if it was to go to the village or market, uh, but she went over the hill and she ended up falling and dying uh, because of that hill on the way. And so Dashrath Manji, I don't remember if it was two decades or three decades, but it was a long time. He spent digging a pathway through this hill, through this mountainside to the village. And he did this all with a chisel and a hammer and hand tools. And this wasn't just any path. This wasn't just a, a couple of meters long. This was 30 to 40 meters long. And it took his entire life to do. But what happened? What, what did he accomplish with that? Um, so not only did he create a path for himself with this new road and this new pathway into this mountain, he did something that nobody thought was possible and nobody had even thought of putting the time into doing. And he created a pathway through this mountain, which is why they call him the mountain man, which allows everybody behind him, everybody going forward now to the future, um, the same path and the same ability to, to take the same path as him. So he did something that nobody else had been thinking about or that had been done before, but he saw a very big need. I um, mean, he capitalized on it and he put in a lot of work so that generations ahead of him will also receive the same benefits of going through this insurmountable hill. And instead of having to go over this hill or this mountain, he just carved a hole right through it. Um, and so how does this relate to Founders Club? Well, us on this call, we have about around 50 people on this call right now. And those of you who are watching are probably um, wanting to do this as a business. And not only that, you probably want to become a founder uh, within doTERRA, India. And becoming a founder is not easy. Uh, for those of you who know what it's like to hit rank or to be in maybe Diamond Club in the US, uh, Founders Club is so much harder than that. Founders Club is like a sprint. Uh, it's like a sprint mixed with a marathon because not only do you have to uh, work against uh, a time clock, uh, but you're also working to hit a certain rank within a certain period of time as, as soon as possible to be able to get one of those Founders Club positions. But once you do it, you've created not only an income stream for yourself, but your family, um, and you get rewarded by being a founder, being one of the pioneer members of doTERRA. So if you're a, a founding wellness advocate, what you've done is similar to Dashrath Manji. You've carved a path that seemed almost insurmountable. Um, India is still very young. It has so much potential. Uh, but what Dashrath Manji did and what you will do when you become a founder is you'll carve a new way for people in your neighborhood, your network, your family, your friends. They're all going to come to the point where they'll know about doTERRA and know how to teach it to everybody else. And you're laying the hardest, um, the hardest path down right now by sharing doTERRA in such a new market space, but you're going to get heavily rewarded for it. So anyways, I wanted to end the presentation with that story. 
and then talk about some of the specific qualifications uh, that we have for Founders Club. Okay, give me just a second and I'll pull it up and then you can also download this. All of you, I assume, are on the team app because you're able to join this call. But for those of you who are not, uh, make sure to hop on the team app because it's the best way to get all the product updates, knowledge, promotions, uh, business um, information, and, and meeting and event schedules as well. So um, this document, we actually just uploaded it to the resources section of um, the team app again because we've already done it in the past a couple of times but we wanted to bring it up again so that you're all completely aware and you guys all have the, the deep understanding of what it takes to be a founder and also what it takes to maintain those qualifications so again I'm going to read the first paragraph because this is super important the first the purpose of a doTERRA founders club program is to identify and reward influential wellness advocates leadership that played a key role in opening and consistently growing with a new market, stimulating growth and developing in a specific area or region and create a sense of urgency in market development. So that's really the purpose of a Founders Club, wherever the, wherever the market is that we're growing doTERRA. There's 40 positions in India. Um, again, we talked about hitting the rank of gold, right? You guys can all see my screen. Gold is the first rank that you wanna hit uh, to be able to get a Founders Club position. And you have to maintain that for at least three consecutive months in a calendar year and then be personally engaged in the business, um, be a wellness advocate in good standing. And then we talked about your qualifying volume. Um, so the maintenance requirements. So every, every year after the qualifying year, the founder, if you're a founding club member, you have to maintain your qualifying rank, whether it's gold, platinum or diamond for at least 10 out of 12 months each calendar year. So again, we're going to give you a couple of grace months because we know that not every month is the same. There's different promotions. There's times where people spend more money um, or they're more tight with their with their pocketbooks. Um, and then founders, again, need to maintain those qualifications above um, to be able to maintain it. Um, the, the payment of Founders Club bonuses happens once a year during the first quarter. Um, of each calendar year, usually by the 15th of February is the latest that it will go out. Um, and again, that's 1% of doTERRA's net commissionable volume divided amongst uh, 40 people. So we'll take 1 40th of that Founders Club and we're going to divide it um, and, and split it between those who are qualified uh, as a founder. Um, and then if founders fall out during uh, the Founders Club position after it has been filled, uh, the, the payout share will still remain at 1 40th. Um, and again, we get the asset question a lot. Why, why won't it go down? Why can't I get, you know, if 10 founders drop out, why can't it be 1 30th of a share? Well, in doTERRA, we have a, a very important culture of unity, right? We don't want you to target other wellness advocates to try to get them to get kicked out of Founders Club. We want it to be unifying. So we're going to maintain 40 positions so that you can all help each other to hit Founders Club. This is a team effort. Um, and those 40 positions, once they're filled, it will still be 40, uh, 1 40th of 1% of the total commissionable volume within the market. And then the future requirements are as follows. We, we talked about this, but in 2023 and 2022, essentially for the rest of this year, if you qualify as a founder this month, which is September, and then October, and then November, um, you'll become a founder. Uh, you could do the same thing October, November, December, um, or you could do it any three months next year as well. Um, and then you'll need to maintain the rank of gold or higher for 10 out of 12 months. And then in the year 2024, it's going to go up to platinum. Uh, platinum qualification means that you need three silvers. And then in 2025, the requirement will be at diamond. Um, and diamond, uh, basically to become a diamond, you need four silvers that are personally enrolled by you. Um, these are important things that you can also read over in your spare time on the, on the team app. But essentially to summarize, the founder... Uh, is going to take responsibility to be a leader, uh, attending company events. You're complying with doTERRA's policies. You know, you're, you're, you're helping your team. The expectation is that you're going to continue to grow the market. You're not just going to qualify um, as a founder, as a founding club member, and then 
um, drop out, right? We don't want this to be just a one-time thing. That's why we have maintenance requirements because again, we want to make sure that you are uh, qualified for life. We wanna make sure that you continue to hit. Andrew, just to put yes. a fine point, um, if you could scroll back up a tiny bit, if someone doesn't make the rank of gold until um, 2023 for three months running, then this entire, do they still need to be um, 10 out of 12 months in 2023? Or does this whole schedule slip back a little bit? So you could have some people actually qualifying in 2023 since it's already in the first of October. Here. Yeah, yeah, good question. We we probably will, you know, there might be, it might go into January or February. So we'll look at it and, and play it by ear, but if we fill up all the positions and it's February or March, um, we might give one grace month, we might still give two. If that Founders Club position, you know, if the requirements are met, it just depends on when it fills up. Um, mm. But the goal, if you are a founder, you become a founder this year, then we're starting a new year. You just have to hit it 10 out of 12 months for the next year. But if you don't fill a Founders Club position until, let's say, April of May of next year, then we'll probably give you one grace month because you have half of the year. You had six months to help qualify you, but um, we didn't right. hold those six months against you, if that makes sense for qualification purposes. Got it. So, awesome. Andrew, if someone hit gold first in December, sorry, if someone hit gold first in December of this year and they hit January and February of next year, what happens? That's three consecutive months. Doesn't count. Yeah, it? same. No, that will still count. So December, January, February, you would you would become a founder if you hit gold three months in a row. So the founders is open from June of this year to June of next year? Or? No, there's no time limit. Um, it could fill up by the end of this year. It could That's fill up at the beginning of next year. It's until those right. 40 positions are filled, if that makes sense. Okay, got it. Awesome, awesome. So... Um, another thing to be aware of is that a founder is a person actually building the account, you know, whether it's your gold account and, and you're enrolling in downline members, those premiers have to be engaged, those executives, um, you know, you can't just build other positions in the name of a, a relative or friend, that's not the doTERRA way. Um, doTERRA reserves the right to audit accounts, so you need to make sure that um, there's, there's no position uh, that we're going to give to somebody in Founders Club. Uh, that is established through qualification that was um, attained through inorganic volume. And that means an order that's placed by someone other than the account holder. Um, it needs to be through legitimate volume, meaning that the, the account holder, the one signing up is placing the orders. You're not placing the orders for them and uh, you're not putting your own credit card there. That, that will get you kicked out of Founders Club. And so we needing to make sure that we uh, maintain a legitimate volume and that there's organic growth. What organic growth means is that when you sign somebody up, their placing orders are on their own. You're not placing the orders for them. Um, and then no individual may have more than one founder's position in, in one market. So you can't qualify as a founder in India and then qualify again and have two positions. There's only one, one account can have one position. Um, and then again, there's maintenance requirements. There's continued progress requirements. Um, we just want to make sure that you're you're engaged in DoTerra, that you're continually growing your team, supporting them, and and uh, representing DoTerra in a good life or a good light. Um, and then again, accounts pursuing Founders Club in India may have accounts from outside of the market. Let's say you're in the U.S., you can grow in India. Um, but your qualifiers are the people that are helping you achieve Founders Club. So, for example, your executives and premier legs that are qualifiers to achieve gold or elite and silver is helping you achieve platinum or diamond must be Indian Wellness Advocate accounts building in the market. So it doesn't matter what country you're from, but your qualifiers do need to be from India. You can't build in, into an India Founders Club with Australian volume and qualifiers or Mexico volume. The, the goal of Founders Club is to grow India. That's why we're going to reward you is for growing um, this market. So awesome. I'll go ahead and stop my screen sharing there. And just as a reminder, this is on the team app. So we put this information and posted it on the team app. 
So you can go to the resources section and download this, save it, uh, review it at your discretion. You can share it with any team members who are also interested in, in becoming founders. Um, and then uh, the guideline, that copy again, it's on the team app. And uh, all right, any other, any other questions that you have for those of you who are on this call? Captain, when you're talking about the legitimate and the, the, the legal ways of uh, doing the business, in India, we have a simple word called the Indian Jukkat. So you just have to say that don't do the Indian Jukkat, do the business the right way. It's just a J U Jukkat. Okay, I'm going to remember that the Indian Jukkat. <laughs> Jukkat. Jukkat. Okay. Yeah, Thank you. Everybody. Thank you, Joseph. Yeah, <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, any other questions regarding Founders Club or, or any other uh, rank qualifications that we went over? We hope this was helpful. We, you know, again, this is going to be recorded and posted on the team app. We know that lots of people from other markets are watching these calls later after they're recorded. And so we appreciate you watching the recordings as well if you're watching it. But um, yes, I see a hand. Pody. Hi, Andrew. I just have a question. Uh, so example, I'm working and becoming a Founders uh, mem Club member and I'll be traveling or shifting to another country, but still be able to do um, my work from there. So would that be okay or? Um, again, you can, you can become a founder if, if you're in another market, but you have to be growing in India. Your qualifiers and your volume needs to be India growth. It can't be another market. So you can be living abroad or vacationing in another spot and still qualify as a founder, but um, it's easier to support a team and be in the same time zone and country as the Founders Club in which you're, you're trying to achieve rank in. Um, so it's always advisable to be in market, but if you're not, you can still, we still have lots of people, like for those of you who know Matt um, and Chante Hall, that's uh, Suzanne's uh, son, he's a founder in, in Brazil, and, and he did that by traveling there very frequently, but they live uh, primarily in Utah in the United States. So you can become a founder in another market, but you do have to put a lot of investment and time into, into growing that market that you're, that you're trying to achieve founders in. Thank you. Andrew, uh, when you have uh, this question on the founders, like say I'm becoming a founder in India, and once we are opening up, uh, suppose, in a market elsewhere, like the Middle East, uh, can I open another account there to become a founder there? So unfortunately, in doTERRA, you can only have one account, but you can sign up other downline members in that new market. And as long as they're okay. in separate legs, then you meet the founders uh, club requirements of that market. You can still become a founder with your one account in two, in two markets. Oh. We have uh, David Shung is a good example. He's, he's amazing. He's helping grow India as well. And he's a U.S. Uh, North America Chinese language club. Uh, Founders Club member. So he's an NACL, uh, North America Chinese uh, language founder, and he's also a founder in Taiwan and China. So he's got three Founders Club positions. We've got many with, with two. Uh, most people just have one because it is very hard to get, but we do have people that are in multiple markets. An accomplishment. So Andrew, I assume that um, India will be similar to the US in that once you reach the rank of silver, you're assigned an account manager. Correct, correct. So that, that makes it a little bit easier to function because you have you know, your personal advisor. Um, so I think that between um, the introduction of more and more products that are more obviously consumable, um, and the account manager, doTERRA does provide lots of resources. It's not as if it's going to be as difficult um, over time as it is initially. That's correct. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna be behind you the whole way. So we've got an amazing support team. We've got staff here in the office that can answer any questions. We're doing these trainings because we know that there's many people in India that are not silvers yet. And we wanna make sure that you feel just as supported as if you were that rank. Um, so that's why we're doing these trainings so that you all feel like you have 
the resources and tools that you need to achieve um, your goals here in the US or as far as in India. Awesome. Did I see a question from Gurinder? Yes, uh, Andrew. Hi, Gurinder. Uh, hi. Uh, uh, this uh, Founder Club uh, will start in December, uh, January uh, 23. So Founders Club started when the market opened in June. So Founders yes. Club is ongoing until we until we close it and fill those uh, positions. Yes, yes, I know that. But if someone is starting uh, December to, uh, January twenty three, what what happened then? So if you sign up, you can sign up with an account now or in January, and as long as Founders Club is still open, you could work to hitting the rank of gold, uh, to securing a position in Founders Club. Uh, that's totally fine. When we announced Founders Club 2.0 in the U.S., Justin Harrison uh, made some amazing statements and, and predicted that we would have people in Founders Club that had not even joined doTERRA yet. And that was a case. We had many, uh, we've had many accounts that were in doTERRA already when Founders 2.0 was announced, but many more who had just barely started or have, hadn't even enrolled yet. Um, and they're not, they're not founders themselves. And so we may have people not on this call, many of them that are not on this call uh, that become founders within India as well. Why I am asking this, because someone start in this, uh, January uh, 23, he have or she have a one year time frame, right? In between one year time frame, uh, someone hit easily to uh, gold or whatever, if, if he want, if he, show, if he or he want become a, uh, in, enter the founder club. I don't think it is one year time frame. It's whoever hits the 40 positions first. That is a confusion I had also. What Andrew says is that if the time they join only two founders positions are filled, there's still 38 open. If 38 that's are filled, true. there's that's only true. two. Because, listen, because, because, because of uh, June to this December, we, you, me, and other leaders from India, they are getting experience. What happened exactly uh, is uh, this process? How to do? What to do? And what is the process? And so many headaches and afflux is coming. That's the reason. If someone is starting uh, January 23, and it, it is good for them, uh, Andrew, of course, you can still go for Founders Club, even if you're starting in January. It will probably be a bigger learning curve, again, because you're just starting. If you're just getting to know doTERRA, you'll probably have a learning curve with the products as well as the business. But you'll be there to support them, I assume, and we'll also be here to support them if they want to become a founder. So, oh, because they, uh, okay, I understand. Okay, fine. Correct. They just need to hit three months in a row. It doesn't matter when they join. They just need to hit gold three months in a row. So if they join in January, they hit gold in February. They also need to hit it in March and April to become a member, assuming Founders Club is still open at that point. Good, that's, good Andrew, that, that's Andrew, that person. I don't know the name of person. The coach in, he asking in India, the Jugaad is not going in this, in this uh, Founder Club. Is a process is a totally learning process. When person leaders learn what is the process, how to achieve and how to maintain and how to retain, then uh, everybody can uh, hit the founder club. Without retain, without anything is nothing is possible. I see. I see. Um, honestly, there's no. We're not going to put any time frame on them, and we'll be there to support them. And I always say. It's better to go at it simply. So if you're building the business or sharing the products, um, it's always best to try to make it as simple as possible. So even somebody that's just being introduced to doTERRA can feel like they can duplicate your efforts. So Justin Harrison, our founding one of our founding distributors in doTERRA, says that all we do is, is share the products and the oils and teach others to do the same. That's how you build a business. I've seen people build up to the rank of silver that didn't even know there was a business opportunity. They just signed up people and all of a sudden they saw a paycheck start rolling through into their into their bank account or in their, in their mail. And so uh, there's definitely um, a big learning curve in doTERRA, but you do not need to know everything to be able to start. So that's a good question. One thing, Andrew, I want, want to know if some, if uh, in India, and USA 86% is a customer in doTERRA. 
not to a wellness advocate right in india and the same same happen if i my customer i if i enroll someone if he hit the purchase the product he fill the all the form all the uh, documents why he fill the all documents and form and uh, card and uh, aadhar card and why why he fill the all he, because he, he is a customer only yeah yeah grinder so this is something i know we've talked about this in person but if you're wanting to do the business in india right now we're set up as a b2b business so even if you're just doing this and you're a customer uh you would have to unfortunately give your kyc documents even if it's just one document you could give your driver's license and that would suffice for both proof of id and proof of address so that's required not by doTERRA but by the direct selling laws that are implemented by india's government but i um jen fowler he's he came to india very recently and also did some calls with the market and talked about how we're very soon going to introduce uh customer options into doTERRA india as sure. well so that way you have people that that can just sign up and not have to worry about whether or not they want to earn commissions they can just purchase the products great question oh thank you thank you very much thank you very much yeah yeah any other questions that you guys have i see podi's hand you already did answer my question perfect perfect what about drisha kumari Uh, I just had a question that I actually joined just a week ago, and I'm very new to Dotera. So I just wanted to know that uh, is there any time frame for uh, this India's Founder Club, or is it like um like do do we take admissions throughout the year for this? So is your question? Do you um need to sign any document to be able to go to Founders Club? uh actually i wanted to ask that uh, is there any like foundation that within like by june 2023 or so and so date the founders club would be closed or no nope, there's no there's no time frame so as long as founders club is not filled up yet as long as there's still spots open founders club will still be open okay thank you and you can i ask one question yes yes dalji yeah uh, good afternoon and uh, i would like to know what's the turnover last year's turnover of the company for for all of doterra yeah right yeah so because you know, when I, when i talk to people around uh, uh, if they are uh, mlm leaders or network marketers uh, they would uh, they are interested in knowing the turnover of the company good question while while we are a private company and our numbers aren't published we we do announce them on stage quite often and and i will say that we over we are over a 2 billion dollar company uh we're we're doing around a little over 16000 crores annually so uh that's shareable you can share that with the field because that has been announced on stage and and by our founding executives okay thank you so much of course well we appreciate all of the great questions you have um any other questions or any other things that we can help you out with